In this video, we're learning about how to test for carbohydrates. So we'll cover what reducing and non-reducing sugars are, how to test for reducing and non-reducing sugars, and then finally, how to test for starch as well. The first thing we need to understand is what reducing and non-reducing sugars are. The term reducing sugars refers to sugars that can reduce other molecules by donating electrons to them. On the other hand, the term non-reducing sugars basically means that they don't donate electrons the way the reducing sugars do. Reducing sugars include all monosaccharides, so for instance glucose, fructose and galactose, but also some disaccharides as well, like maltose and lactose. Non-reducing sugars include most disaccharides, like sucrose, but also all polysaccharides, including examples like glycogen and cellulose. It's worth knowing that the correct term for polysaccharides is non-reducing carbohydrates rather than sugars, because the term sugar actually refers to simple carbohydrates, so things like monosaccharides and disaccharides. Next, let's look at how to test for reducing and non-reducing sugars in a given food sample. If we start with reducing sugars, we first put two centimeters cubed of our food sample into a test tube and then add two centimeters cubed of Benedict's reagent. And Benedict's reagent is just this blue chemical after that, we then heat it for five minutes in a gently boiling water bath. And if the solution stays blue, it means there are no reducing sugars present, and we call this a negative result. On the other hand, if we see a colour change, this means there are reducing sugars present, so we describe this as a positive result. The specific colour change tells us what concentration of reducing sugar is in the food sample. A green colour indicates a low concentration, an orange colour suggests a medium concentration, and a brick red colour shows a high concentration of reducing sugar. Moving on to non reducing sugars, then, these don't react with Benedict's reagent directly. So, to test for these types of sugars, you first need to do the test for reducing sugars. If the result is negative, meaning the solution stays blue and we don't have any reducing sugars, we need to carry out a few more steps to figure out if the food sample contains non-reducing sugars instead. To do this, we put another two centimeters cubed of the food sample into a different test tube and then add two centimeters cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid and heat it for five minutes. This step breaks down or hydrolyzes any non-reducing sugars into reducing sugars. Next, we add sodium hydrogen carbonate which is an alkaline substance that neutralizes the acidic solution. Then finally, we test for reducing sugars again, and this time, if the result is positive and we see a brick red precipitate, it means that there are now reducing sugars in the solution, which tells us there were non reducing sugars in that original food sample that we started with. For a more precise measurement of sugar concentration, scientists can use a colorimeter which is a device that measures the absorbance of light by a solution. A low absorbance suggests a low concentration of reducing sugars, whilst a high absorbance suggests a higher concentration. Alternatively, you can filter the solution and weigh the solid that's left over after we filter it, which we call the precipitate. A lower mass of precipitate indicates less sugar, and a higher mass of precipitate indicates more sugar. OK, and to finish up, let's look at how to test for starch in a food sample. The first thing we do is put two centimeters cubed of the food sample into a test tube. Then we add a few drops of iodine solution, which is orange in color, and then give it a shake. In this case, a negative result is if the solution stays orange, which shows it doesn't contain any starch. But a positive result is if the solution changes to blue-black which means the food sample does contain starch. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam-style questions, and past papers. 
and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.